What if I told you Kvothe is a direct descendant of one of the most powerful beings in the history of Temerant, the Great Shaper Eax? This would explain his high level of skill in certain areas and his penchant for naming. It would also explain why his story ends in tragedy, why he keeps messing things up, and why he doesn't take the time to think before he reacts, and that is because he's a luckless lackless just like Jax. Now Eax is the one who started the creation war and is now locked behind the Doors of Stone. The third book is conveniently titled The Doors of Stone. I believe that Kvothe's greatest folly is that he's going to set Eax free. Let me explain, there's a lot to cover in this video. I'm actually going to cover several different theories in this video, so I hope you stick to the end. I'm going to go in-depth to explain who Eax is, the story of Jax, the creation of the Fae, the truth of the Underthing. I'm going to touch on the lackless rhyme and the lockless box and Kvothe's color-changing eyes and how he's most definitely part of the lackless bloodline. Ahem, <clears throat> speaking of Bloodline. But real quick, today's video is sponsored by Bloodline, Heroes of Lithis. This game has one of the most unique game mechanics I've ever seen, and yes, it does look great. I love the art style. You can download and try the game for free and receive an amazing starter pack. Bloodline, Heroes of Lithis is a hero collector fantasy RPG with a 3D art style in which you can build your own kingdom and collect champions to defend it and the world. But even better, you can create your own legendary champion Champions by combining the bloodlines of elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborn, vampires, etc. And now is the best time to try Bloodline because the game is having its best update ever. The new Lycan clan, Goltung, is coming to the game this Christmas and it has a very sleek design. They are the most brutal damage dealers yet to be found in the world of Lithis with different weapons and skill sets on each gender. Combine this brand new lineage of Bloodlines with the existing ones to get even stronger hybrids. For a limited time only, players can receive a Goltung Champion for free by participating in the Christmas event that's starting on December 22nd. Also, starting this December, all players can enjoy battling in the new Guild War, Valley of Conquerors, on brand new maps and be rewarded with legendary hybrids. Conquer territories with your guild members and claim rewards to create the most unique champions called Bloodcraft Legends. For the first season, every Everyone has the chance to claim the Bloodcraft Champion Scarlet, a rare combination of demigods and vampires. Gather your team and start playing now so that you can claim her for free by simply beating your enemies. New bloodlines and legendary hybrids are constantly being added to the game, which means there's endless possibilities for you to find the greatest hybrid that suits your style. Download the game now for free for both Android and iOS using my link in the description, or you can scan the QR code that's up on the screen. Using my link, you'll get a starter pack worth $20 that contains 3 stamina potions, 100,000 gold, and 100 diamonds. And don't forget you can get a Lycan champion for free this Christmas. I've been having fun creating my own champions. Anyway, big thank you to Bloodlines for sponsoring the video. Now back to the video. Before I go over why I think Kvothe is the son of Eax, or at least a descendant, let me first explain who Eax is. Eax, a powerful shaper from the time period of the Creation War, which took place several thousand years before the time period of the book's narration. Long before the cities of man, before men, before Fey, there were those who walked with their eyes open. They knew all the deep names of things. According to Felurian, the war was primarily waged between two factions who practiced naming, one group called Knowers, who knew the names of all things but lived in harmony with them and never exerted their mastery, and the other group, Shapers. Shapers took the art of naming a step further to change that which they knew the true names of, creating many new and wondrous things. Now these vastly different practices led the two factions into conflict. The Shapers grew bolder and more wild, while the Knowers urged them to stop. Seeking a place to practice their skill unhindered, the Shapers created the Fane Realm, and there each of them made a star which they placed into the empty sky. However, the greatest Shaper, Eax, was unsatisfied with only a star, and so he used his ability to pull the moon into the Fae, causing it to phase between both worlds, and it's this action that sparked the Creation War. 
Now it's said that Eax spoke to the Cathay before doing this, and the Cathay is the malicious creature bound to a tree in the Fey Realm. It can see all possible futures with perfect accuracy and clarity, branching out from a single moment. It uses this knowledge to cause the worst possible outcomes for as many people as possible. It often reveals information that will hurt and traumatize those who speak to it. It poisons them so that they go out into the world and cause chaos. The Cathay spoke with Eax before he stole the moon, and Lanray before he betrayed Mir Tyrinial. It's possible the chaos going on in the frame story is a result from Kvoth speaking to the Cathay. Now Eax is described as one of the only characters considered a match in power and ability to Selatos, Lyra, and Aleph. In Scarpy's story, he explains how the Knowers were nearly defeated in the Creation War, but during the Battle of Drossen Tor, Lanray was able to conquer a great beast, and the enemy was shut beyond the Doors of Stone. And then of course we know that Lanray speaks with the Cathay, he's cursed with immortality, and becomes Haliax and betrays the Urgan Empire. This leads to the creation of the Chandrian and the Amir who oppose them. But that enemy, who is shut beyond the Doors of Stone, is almost certainly Eax, since Felurian says it was the first and greatest Shaper who is shut beyond the Doors of Stone. Considering Felurian was an eyewitness of this war, I think it's pretty fair for us to trust her in this. I do think it's interesting how even though Eax and the Shapers created the Fey Realm, Felurian doesn't speak of them highly. In fact, she seems too scared or angry to speak Eax's name. Now we learn of another story about Eax, but in this one, his name is Jax. In the Eld Forest, Kvoth is told a story by Hesp about a luckless boy named Jax, who falls in love with the moon. Now names changing over time, or with who's telling the story, is a reoccurring theme within these books, and here it definitely makes sense, as the sound for J and I are often the same in many different languages. Now again, Jax is a boy with no luck, or luckless, and many take this to mean that he is a lackless. In fact, he's likely the founder of the lackless family. One of the oldest families in Temerant, with a long lineage filled with misfortune and misery. And it's a family name that's mutated and evolved over time. We're gonna talk more about the lackless pretty soon. In the story, Jax lives in a broken house at the end of a broken road. Some said the problem was that he never had any parents. Some said he had a drop of fairy blood in him that kept his heart from ever knowing joy. Some said he was cursed or that he had a demon riding his shadow. Now Jax wasn't able to find happiness, and he ends up making a bet with a tinker, who says that if he couldn't find anything that would make the boy happy in his packs, he would give all of them to the boy. But if Jax was able to find something, he would have to give the tinker his broken house. Now Jax doesn't find anything that makes him happy, but upon trying on some spectacles and seeing the moon, he decides that having her as his own would make him happy. The Tinker can't give him the moon, so he loses the bet and gives up all of his packs, but Jax decides to give the Tinker his broken house and says that it's up to him to mend it. Then the boy sets off down the Great Stone Road in search of the moon, until eventually it leads him to the mountains. I want to pause here to mention a theory. I think Jax's broken house is the underthing of the university. Now, I am not the first person to come up with this theory. Many Kingkiller fans have come to this same conclusion. Looking at the map, the Great Stone Road is a direct line from the university to the Far East Mountains. This is the path that Jax took. Whoever this tinker was, it looks like the broken house, or the under thing, became the foundation of the university. I don't know about you, but to me it just makes sense that the under thing is the broken house, and I think the tinker wasn't actually able to mend it, so he built a university upon it, and that eventually became what it is today. Now one of the items that the tinker had in his pack was a book of secrets. We know Old Cobb mentions a story of Kvoth finding a Book of Secrets, and in The Wise Man's Fear, Kvoth does find a book called the Book of Secrets in the Archives. This is a strange book on fairy tale creatures, and it has a mysterious passage about the Chandrian, where it says the Chandrian are quite nice to us. And what's interesting is that this page, unlike all the others in the book, has no picture, and it's framed in decorative scroll work. Now later on, we find out the Amir are known to hide secret messages in scroll work. 
perhaps these are Yilish knots with a hidden message about the Chandrian. I think it's likely we're going to see this book appear again in book 3. Now it's also worth noting that in the slow regard of silent things, deep in the under thing, Ari has a book titled Book of Secrets. On the cover of this book, we see a moon and a burning candle. So what might this book have that's different from the one that Kvoth found? Could this be the original book that once belonged to a tinker gambled away to Eax, the moon thief? I think it's possible. Okay, I'm going off track. Back to the story. Jax heads to the mountains, and here he finds an old barefoot hermit who claims to be a listener and knows about names. The hermit helps Jax open what's in the tinker's third pack, and inside is a bent piece of wood, a stone flute, and an iron box. Jax goes on to use the crooked piece of wood to create the folding house, and this house is described as having different seasons in different rooms, and an unfamiliar sky, and it's because of these details that many fans believe the folding house is the Fey Realm. I mean, it even mentions the bedroom being in twilight, which would represent Felurian's twilight glade. Now, the house had many doors and windows, many ways both in and out, and again, this represents the Fey Realm, and how the Greystones all around around Temerant act as doors into the Fae. In the highest tower of this house, Jax plays his flute and the moon comes down to him. He speaks with her and eventually ends up tricking her into giving her name, Ludus, and he traps part of this name within his iron box causing the moon to travel between the sky in his folding house, or the Fae, and the sky of Temeran. Now there's a few theories here I want to touch on. The Barefoot Hermit may be the philosopher Tekim. Tekim is famous for the quote about uh, the three things that wise men fear. And his classic pose is depicted as a barefoot man in the foot of a cave teaching to his students. That seems very much like the Hermit. However, some fans think that the Hermit is the Cathay, as we know that Eax spoke to the Cathay before he stole the moon, and he spoke to the hermit who gave him all the things he needed to know in order to steal the moon. Also, the Cathay is isolated from the rest of the world, just like the hermit is. And when Jax began to unfold the folded house, the hermit didn't want him to do it in the cave, so Jax went a little further to open up uh, the folded house, but it was much bigger than he expected. So maybe when he unfolded the house and made the Fey Realm, it did end up stretching as far as the hermit's cave and trapped the hermit it within the Fey Realm. Another possibility I've seen some people point out is that the Cathay could be the Tinker himself. Tinkers are kind of weird in the King Killer Chronicle. They have this way of predicting what you're going to need in the future. Honestly, I should probably make a full video just on Tinkers at some point. But the Tinker is the one who gave Jax the folded house and the flute and the box. Everything he needed to steal the moon. Maybe the ancient version of Tinkers were knowers who knew the things that you needed for the future. Who knows? I'm just brainstorming. Now in many ways, Kvoth mirrors Jax. He originally lacked the patience to learn naming from Elodin, and this kind of parallels Jax's interaction with the Hermit. Jax was too impatient to listen, and was too impatient when unfolding the folded house. Jax reminds me of the general recklessness that is Kvoth's major character flaw, of acting without taking the time to think. Take for example his interactions with Elodin before he leaves the university. He's much too impatient. Now you may remember when Abanthi was warning Kvoth of the dangers of a clever but thoughtless person. Now Jax is basically a personification of this. He started the biggest war in the history of Temerant, a war that changed the landscape of the Four Corners. And now in the frame narrative, Kvoth has also caused a war and has messed everything up. Kvoth chasing Denna mirrors Jax and the ever-changing moon. In fact, I want to make a full video about Denna and the moon soon. Also, Ari can kind of represent the moon. Where Jax plays the flute and the moon came to him, Kvoth plays the lute and Ari appears. Now we have very little physical information on Eax, but the one thing we do know is that he's of the dark and changing eye. Who else is described as having eyes that grow darker? Willem gestured in my direction. Look at his eyes now. Mola looked at me. They're dark, she said, sounding surprised. Dark green like a pine bow. Will continued. Don't argue with him when his eyes go dark like that. No good comes of it. Then he saw Kvoth's eyes. They had deepened to a green so dark they were nearly black. Kvoth's eyes caught and held him. They were the same dark eyes that Chronicler had seen before. Eyes like an angry god's. 
Foth has his mother's green eyes that have a ring of gold in them, but his eyes change color, they turn dark when he's angry. This is because he's also of the dark and changing eye. Well, I'm convinced he is the son of the Great Shaper. Now, how is Kvothe related to Eax? Well, we already know that he is a lackless. Kvothe mentions that his mother was a noblewoman who was whisked away by his father, but that she never talked about her family, and they'd only ever visited her relatives once when he was very young. Lady Meluin Lackless is a vintage noble and the sole heir to the Lackless lands. In the wise man's fear, Kvothe successfully helps the mayor court and eventually marry Maluin. Maluin hates the Edema Rue because her sister Natalia ran off with a trooper. And when Kvothe first meets her, he's struck by how familiar her appearance is to him. He can't place why, but he says the resemblance was definitely not from the university or from Imre. This is because she reminds him of his mother. Kvothe's mother, Lorian, is Natalia Lackless. Which makes it kind of awkward that he was paid to flirt with his aunt. This is one of those well-known theories in the fanbase that's pretty much confirmed within the book itself. However, I've still talked to plenty of people who never really picked up on the small hints and clues, so I think it's still worth talking about. At one point, Kvothe recites a song that his father wrote that got him in trouble with his mother. Now the last lines of the song say, It's worth my life to make my wife not tally a lot less. Not tally a lot less sounds very much like a phonetic pronunciation of Natalia Lackless. Now shout out to Reddit user Fyrog who pointed out that the German translation bends the English a bit to get locker lass, emphasizing the significance of this line to make it sound like it's close to lockless. Obviously Rothfuss wanted this clue to carry over into different translations. Now at one point, Arladin says to Lorien, Did you happen to bed down with some wandering god a dozen years ago? That might solve our little mystery. She swatted at him playfully, and a thoughtful look crossed her face. Spoiler alert, she did. And there's actually a lot of moments throughout the books where Kvoth is referenced as a god. And I think this is a hint that his mother has a secret. Now there's a chapter in which Kvoth sings the child's rhyme about the Lady Lackless, and his mother becomes quite adamant that he shouldn't be singing it. We're led to believe this is because of the innuendo, but it could also be because she is Lady Lackless. Her sister Meluin is described as Lady Lackless, so it makes sense that Natalia would be as well. And the way that she reacts, where she says that Lady Lackless is a real person with feelings that can be hurt, it makes it seem like she personally was hurt by the rhyme. Because this rhyme is about her. Now originally I wanted to decipher the entire Lackless rhyme, but that's just gonna make this video too long, so I'm gonna make a second video later in the week where I go line by line deciphering it. For now, let me give an overview of what I think. The poem is describing seven things needed to open the lackless door. There's a flood being held behind the door, and we know from Felurian that Eax is held behind the doors of stone, which I believe is the same as the lackless door. Now, I think the sun that brings the blood in the poem is not simply talking about the blood of a lackless, but specifically the blood of Eax, Eax's son. The rhyme mentions Lady Lackless, or Lorian, having a husband associated with the lackless door. I'm proposing that Eax is that husband. Kvoth is the son that brings the blood. Now, how would Lorian get behind the lackless door to meet Eax? through her dreams. Both lackless rhymes emphasize sleep. There's a secret she's been keeping. She's been dreaming and not sleeping. Then comes that which comes with sleeping. I believe that to travel past the lackless door, you must be dreaming. In her sleep, she's lucid and sort of astral projecting behind the lackless door where she had a child with Eax in secret. This is the secret that she's been keeping. This would actually mirror the story of Periel taught by the Talon Church. Periel became pregnant through her dream and gave birth to Menda, who is the mortal form of the god Telu. Now this parallel isn't a coincidence, it's foreshadowing. The seventh thing that she's keeping underneath her black dress is the secret. This suggests a hidden pregnancy, and she accesses the lackless door through a road that's not for traveling. I believe this is the crossroads of Ferineal, Ferineal, where all the roads in the world meet. This is not a place any man has ever found by searching. It is not a place you travel to. It is the place you pass through while on your way to somewhere else. 
traveling through doors while you're sleeping is something we've already seen in the King Killer Chronicle. Fella had a dream where she went behind the four-plate door and discovered that Valeritas was the name of an old dead king and his tomb was behind the door. Quoth also had some dreams about the four-plate door, but he was never able to get in. And we can't forget, after the slaughter of his troop and he had to survive in the woods, he had a dream where he was surrounded by grey stones. Now I believe he was actually traveling to Feyrinial here. Near the end of the dream, there's a mysterious door that appears, but he wakes up just before he's able to pass through it. Now for the record, I think the ring unworn mentioned in the lackless rhyme is the ring of waystones. I also don't think it's a coincidence that Kvoth seemingly spoke with something in his dreams. There was somebody that was guiding him, appearing as other people that he knew, that gave him information he needed to survive, and this wasn't stuff he already knew. Maybe this was even his father, Eax, guiding him in his sleep. Now, Codicus mentions that on the oldest part of the Lackless lands, in the oldest part of their ancestral estate, there is a secret door, a door without a handle or hinges. Now, my argument is that the oldest part of the Lackless lands would be the Broken House, the original home of Jax, the Underthing. And what do we find at the very top of the Underthing? The four-plate door. Codicus mentions no one knows what's on the other side. I believe the Lackless door is the four-plate door, and it's also the doors of stone, leading to whatever realm Eax resides in. The Cathay told Kvoth to stick by the mayor and he will lead him to the door of the Amir. Not many folk will take your search for the Amir seriously, you realize. The mayor, however, is quite the extraordinary man. He's already come close to them though he doesn't realize it. Stick by the mayor and he will lead you to their door. Now the mayor paid for Kvoth's tuition to return to the university, so in a sense, the mayor is leading Kvoth back to the door of the Amir. I think some of the university masters are Amir and they're in charge of guarding the foreplay door. Now I want to talk about the lockless box. This is a family heirloom of the lackless family and it's a box that has no seams, hinges, or locks. And it seems to be made of the same type of wood as the tree that imprisons the Cathay. Now Kvoth guesses the box contains something several thousand years old made of glass or stone. And I've always been convinced it contains a piece of rock or obsidian that Selatos used to gouge out his own eye and bind Lanray. However, I think it's a possibility this is Jax's box and it holds a piece of the name of the moon. Or maybe it contains Jax's flute. Now, Kvoth suspects that it has Yillish writing on it, a language of knots. He's not able to listen and open it, just like how Jax wasn't able to open the knot on the third bag without the help of the hermit. Now, some fans think Denna's ring, which also has Yillish knots on it, is the key to opening the box. Both versions of the Lackless Rhyme seem to link the box with the Lackless door. The first mentions a door without a handle and a box with no lid or locks, while the second has a door that holds the flood and a thing tight held in keeping. We can assume that this all probably leads somewhere, that the combination of these two rhymes is going to play a big role in Book 3. I think Kvoth is the son of Eax, and he's going to set his father free by opening the doors of stone, and unleashing a flood of Skrail and whatever else. Now I should also point out the Chronicler's real name is Devin Lockies. Now Lockies is speculated by many fans to be a branch of the Lockless family. Kvoth first meets the Chronicler when he's waiting for the Skrail at the ruins of an old crumbling house, a broken house. And in this chapter, he refers to Chronicler as unlucky on a few occasions. To me, this seems like Rothfuss hiding some very clever clues. Let me know what you think about all the theories that I went over. These videos take a lot of work and they take a lot of time, but one of my favorite things about the King Killer Chronicle is sharing these theories, and there's still plenty more that I want to cover. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations. Also, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody on my Patreon who makes these videos possible. You don't know how much I appreciate you and how much it helps. Anyway, I'll see you next time.